counselors and school counselors to be. Thank you guys so much for coming to my channel, The Inspiring School Counselor. It's already the end of the school year. I feel like this school year has really flown by. And so for me to be able to just sit down right now and kind of give you guys my year in review, it's kind of like, my gosh, like time, slow down. <laughs> but I'm super excited to be able to sit down with you guys. So I'm not going to prolong the time. If you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you can notify every time I upload a video. All right, you guys, let's get into it. So let's just start at the fact that I am a school counselor in a whole different school than where I was at last year, okay? For some of you guys that might not know, last year I was a school counselor at a primary school, which was pre-K through second grade. And this year I was able to, you know, of course, transition from that school to the school that I'm at now, which is an elementary school pre-K through fifth grade. That has been a big change, you know, it within itself. First of all, working with the higher grades has been like different for me to maneuver. And I actually was able to use my lessons that I use like at my prim this primary school that I was at before, but I had to actually find different lessons that was more uh, age appropriate for the third through uh, fifth grader. What I do love is that because I went through Teachers Pay Teachers and I brought like the uh, curriculum bundles, I was able to find a lot of my lessons that I did not use last year because me being in a primary setting, I was able to use this year. But one thing that I absolutely love and that is working with the older kids so the third through fifth graders don't worry my primary kiddos I absolutely love they always have a place in my heart and you know all that good stuff but let me tell you guys I really enjoy working with my older kids this year um, just being able to talk to them about different issues that you know arise in their life and then it's kind of like you're able to build an even deeper bond with the students you know it's kind of like they they understand who you are, why you're there, and they utilize you. So something that was different for me this year, I was actually going to the teacher's classrooms to teach my lessons. And I, I, I was glad to be able to try it out and just see how it goes. And if you guys see my video that I posted, and I'll make sure I put that down in the description below, I actually showed you guys me like putting together my cart and getting it all ready because in order for me to go and teach these lessons in the teacher's classrooms, I had to make sure I had everything that I needed. So I needed my little rolling cart that covered, had everything. And yes, I enjoyed, you know, doing that, but I also realized just the importance of me having my own classroom and having the kids come to me. I'm so glad God worked it out for me because I was going to talk to my principal about wanting to get a classroom. So with that being said, I'm so happy to say that I'm going to be actually in my own classroom this upcoming year. Another thing that I noticed this year that was a big difference than where I was at last year is that I actually wasn't called for a lot of behaviors. And I am not complaining at all about that. Let me tell you guys, I'm definitely not complaining all, at all about that. But um, that is a difference that I did notice. And it was more like whenever there was big behaviors that took place, the administrators would go and see about the issue. And if it is that they feel like that student needs to talk to me, then, you know, they would reach out to me and then I would see that student then. That is something that I did notice because usually I just remember being the one that they would call, hey, you know, we have a student that's throwing chairs. Can you come to my room? Can you come to room, let's just say 202? And so I would have to go and kind of talk that student down. So this year I did not have to do that. And it actually felt pretty good not being that person that has to go and do. So that was something different that I noticed. Um, another thing is I was a part of data meetings this year. Now, let me tell you guys, I was a part of data meetings last year, but it was really cool to just be able to continue that. Um, I believe as school counselors, it is important to be a part of the data meeting just so that you can kind of figure out, okay, where the kids are. Usually in those data meetings, you're also able to get more information on the student. And also you're able to give information on the student. So there were times where one of the teachers had a concern about their student and I was able to let them know, hey, I actually been in contact with this student's parents and this is what we're thinking, you know, or I was able to remind them that, hey, this student has a 504, you know, just keep that in mind. So that was just really good to just be able to continue that. Another thing that was different for me this year is I actually had to be the one to write up FBAs and BIPs. 
And so for some of you guys that might not know what that even is, an FBA is a functional behavior assessment and a BIP is a behavior intervention plan. Okay. And so I'm not, I wasn't used to that at all. The school that I was at prior, they had a behavior interventionist like in the county. She was the one that handled all the FBAs. There was probably only one time I had to write a behavior intervention plan for a student. And that was because the behavior interventionist at the time could not be there. But this year it was solely on me. The school counselors are looked upon writing those uh, plans out. I actually did assessments on students. I'm going to actually insert a, a, a picture so that you guys can see some of the assessments that I have in my office. All right, you guys, so as a school counselor, I didn't realize the amount of assessments or screeners that I had to do until I moved into this new school district. And so I'm just going to show you guys some of the things that I just have here um, in my office. I have the light retention scale. I also have this Joseph, um, what is it, picture self-concept self concept scale. I have attention deficit disorder evaluation scale, the autism spectrum rating scales, behavior emotional screening system, the KBIT2 um, emotional or behavior dis disorder intervention manual. I have the Brigance early childhood screen three for three through five. Um, this is another life retention scale. I have the K T E A three. I don't even know how to say that. Then I have the second one, and I also have this one right here that says K seals. Um, and so, yeah, you guys, I did not know the amount of assessments, and I'm sure that there's probably more of these, but these are the ones that's in my office now. Out of all of these, I have done the Brigance, and I'm getting ready to do the A S R S and the k bit all right like i remember it being in college and we talked about different assessments but i never had to do one so coming into this new school district and being able to not only see the assessment books i'm like oh well that's nice that they have it in here but they actually had me do some assessments it was like so that's i guess that's a part of my job you know i actually did two autism assessments and then I did quite a few, about like maybe 30 Brigance uh, assessments that I had to do on students. So um, that was something that was very new for me, something that I was able to adapt to and kind of figure it out. It wasn't as hard as what I thought it would be, um, especially once you get the hang of it. But I tell you, this one that I had to do, like I was like, mm, this is a little bit hard. And so I actually had to uh, follow up with my school psychologist and so they're going to, they had to help me through that process. A great thing that I was able to do this year that I actually done at my other school last year was I actually started the school store. Okay. So I was super happy. I actually didn't know if it was going to be a go because I know like my principal, he was just saying that, you know, as far as with monies to see if it was even, we were even have it available to be able to fund it for it to go forward. Um, but, and actually we did not, I only was able to get like 200 and something dollars. That's not enough to start off a whole store, let alone, you know, for it to last. So I actually had to reach out to a lot of businesses, um, to request donations and gratefully, you know, that wasn't foreign to me. Just being able to see the school store come forward and the kids absolutely loved it. They enjoyed it. This year that I had to do that I did not have to do at the school that I was at prior, um, which was helping with uh, state testing. Now, as you guys know, as school counselors, we should not be even involved with state testing. But as you also know that there are some school districts where that kind of just falls in the school counselor's lap. And so I had to be one to administer the state's test to uh, three of the students. I didn't have to do like a class. I just got the students that had to have accommodations because maybe they had an IEP or maybe they had a 504. And so I actually had three students that was testing with me. And, you know, it wasn't bad, y'all. It wasn't bad at all. Um, but definitely I want you guys to keep that in mind is that school counselors are not supposed to help with those type of things. But sometimes it just depends, like I said, on your school district or your principal or whatever type of situation that you're in where you might be that person. So I'm going to be talking to you guys about fair share responsibilities, okay? One of the things that was different 
this year that I, of course, I didn't have this luxury last year. So this year, I only had one fair share responsibility, which was doing morning duty every morning. And it was like from 7.15 to 7.50. I would have to be outside with the assistant principal and we would let the kindergartners and the first graders in the building. And so I had to do that all year. You know, last year, not only did I have morning duty twice a week, but I also had lunch duty that I had to do and afternoon car duty. So y'all, let me tell you, I absolutely love my schedule, especially at the end of the day, just knowing that I did not have to go out and do car duty or bus duty, but I can focus on putting in my use of time, kind of cleaning up my room from the kids coming in and out, and just kind of just getting my stuff together and set for the next day. That just really felt really well. And one thing that I love about being at the school that I'm at now is that they really take care of my time. So they really try to make sure that I'm not being pulled for things that have nothing to do with my role, um, unless they really need me to do something. I think it was like only once or twice this year that I actually had to fill in for a teacher, but it wasn't even for a long time. Like it was literally maybe for maybe 30 minutes and then my principal was just good at finding somebody else so I really love that they really protect my time as a school counselor and respect my time as a school counselor knowing the kids that I have to see the small groups I have to do the calls I have to make to parents and certain ones in the community and that's what I love about where I'm at now so this year that was very new to me that my principal actually wanted me to put in place and, and run. And that was having a student ambassadors group. So if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically when you pick, you know, students. And for us, it was fifth graders that done what it is that they're supposed to do. They follow the rules They or follow expectations. They're trustworthy. They're honest. They get their work done. And actually, those students were picked by the teachers. And we all just kind of came together and we talked about each student. And so we was able to pick. 10 but actually ended up in only being like nine of them so i was able to take these nine kids underneath my wing and do like leadership talk about leadership and we also had them do like safety patrol things um and then when we would have like different events like maybe veterans day i would have the student ambassadors do something like really special for the veterans and so that was just really good to be able to do and i and i hopefully we're able to do it this year as well and i have so many other ideas Ideas that I want to add for the student ambassadors to do and so I'm really glad about that so that was something really cool this year that I was able to, to be a part of and just see blossom one thing that was new this year I had to help with class lists putting together class lists for this upcoming year and I actually really enjoyed that I love that my principal wanted me to be in and a part of this process and I think it's really important especially with me being the school counselor and working with so many kids and talking to so many parents, um, I was able to even give insight on students that should be together, students that shouldn't be together, even some things that parents have said to me, hey, I don't want my student to be with this student or I don't want my child to be with this student. And so I was able to kind of look out for that whenever we're putting that together. Also, I was able to kind of give insight on, hey, I don't think that this student is going to be really good with this teacher maybe we need to put that student with another teacher so just being able to be a part of that process and kind of be able to put my insight on things it's just really really good and so that team actually made up of me my uh principal and the assistant principal as well as the special ed department and our esl teacher and so that was really good for all of us to be able to come together and do that. I also enjoyed putting together certain events. So like Red Ribbon Week, that was really new, you guys. Never done Red Ribbon Week before. I remember at my old school, our principal didn't really want us to do Red Ribbon Week because we just had little littles, you know. And so, but this year, my principal, you know, he was for it. And so I was able to do Red Ribbon Week. I did Bully Prevention Month. But I was able to put together some events um, for, the stu for the school as a whole. And so that was really good. And I'm looking forward to this year, especially since now that I have more of a grip on things. And what I mean by that is that whenever you're coming into a new school district, it doesn't matter how long you've been a school counselor. 
you know, of course you might have the foundational things, but also whenever you are coming into a new place, you're basically coming in as a new school counselor because you're learning their protocols and what it is that they want you to do and how they do things. And so now that I feel like I have more of a grip of the things that I do, I feel like this upcoming year is going to be even smoother. I'll be implementing some more things. So this year overall, y'all, I absolutely loved it. I love working with my kiddos. I love um, just how accepted you know I felt from the faculty and staff because as you guys know, coming in to a new place, having to learn everybody's name, it just can be overwhelming. But I really love that the place that I'm at now, like, and don't get me wrong, my other place I was at, the other school I was at, they were good to me too. But it's just something when you can come into a new place and just everybody embrace you. And so I absolutely love it. I love being here. I love that I'm so much closer home. So that is really good as well. But yeah, that was my school year in review. If you guys have any questions for me, please make sure that you email me at theinspiringschoolcounselor at gmail.com or you can put it down in the comments below. I thank you guys so much for your time and I'll see you next time.